Hey everybody, Sexy Matt the Pharaoh Wizard here. Let's talk about The Hunger Games, colon, The Mockingjay, dash, part two, parentheses, The Mockening, hashtag, the last one, ellipses, probably. All right, since I've never done a full Hunger Games review, let me tell you about my personal history with The Hunger Games. At first, I had no interest in seeing this at all. I did not want to see this stupid movie. Um, it really felt like another teen book, Twilight thing. You know, you got the love triangle, except instead of supernatural, this is futuristic. And I was like, oh, I don't want to see this piece of crap. But then people finally talk me into it. You know, they tell me you know, J Law's in it, who's America's you know favorite dirt face. So, and then finally someone's like, oh, well, also Woody Harrelson's in it. It's like, all right, Woody Harrelson's in it. Let's see this thing. And I check it out, and I was really surprised. At first, you know, you know this is a movie about kids killing each other. Duh. But you kind of forget about it. Um, even during the movie, like, even during the training, you're like, yeah, it's about kids killing each other. But, you know, I don't think it's really about that. And then you see that first scene in the uh, arena, and you're like, holy crap, this is a movie about kids killing each other. But it like, finally like, kicks in, like, oh, crap. And it's done really well. Um, the love triangle is there, and it's my annoyance throughout the entire series. But it's less played in this one, I think. Um, it's just her trying to survive, and she does what she needs to survive. And so I think that's where it fits in. You don't see you don't see Gale that much, so Peta's not that much competition. It's just the situation that it's involved in. So it's done really, really well. So I was on board. So I saw Catching Fire. This is my favorite Hunger Games. Um, a lot of people complain like it's a lot about it's a lot like the first one, just done again. You know, you got the same stuff going on. And yes, it is, but it's different. It's a lot like Back to the Future, where it's something that you've seen, but it's different. It's familiar, but it's different. And I think that plays really well into this, where, yeah, it is the same thing, but something's off. And, you know, there's a bigger story going on. And that, you know, that comes all together in the end, and it's done great. And I love Catching Fire. Also, my favorite part is, of course, Joanna. She is so freaking awesome. I love her. I love every scene she's in. She just owns it. She is great. So then we get Mockingjay Part 1. Um, I did a, a quick review of this in my last year's Best Movie Countdown. So um, you can see a little bit of that. Um, it is one of the better split movies. And what I mean by split movie is where they take a book or property that's only one thing and split it into multiple movies. Um, it's the better of that because a lot of times when you do that, it ends up being a lot of build up with no payoff in the first movie, then I'll pay off with no build up in the second movie. This one balances it a little bit more. Um, there is still a lot of waiting around for something to happen. And this movie really showcases the fact of Katniss falling backwards into greatness. Like, she didn't mean to be this great uh, leader and icon, she just kind of wanted to survive. And that is the movie. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it's definitely her falling backwards into greatness. And it's kind of interesting to see. So there's a lot of not going on is my big complaint. And then also there is no Joanna in this. So you get like a small snippet at the end. And you know what? That's bullshit. You can't do that movie. You can't make me love a character and then take her away. No. Bad movie. So let's get into part two. First thing, I'm going to go on a small rant. And it definitely pertains to this movie. So these split movies are going to happen. They make too much money. It's just going to keep happening unless we stop completely watching them. But if you get invested in the series and then they do that at the end, you can't avoid it. So it's just going to happen. Harry Potter started it, and it's just going to keep going on. My main problem is the, the well, that these do exist. But my real problem is is they don't get... They don't do anything interesting with it in the sense of the name of it. It's always just part one, part two, part one, part two. 
Um, Hobbit did it a little bit better where they gave it subtitles of chapters of the book, and at least that was interesting. So that's something those movies have. They're complete garbage, but that's something, I guess. But I really felt specifically in Hunger Games, they missed out on a real big opportunity for a second subtitle. So instead of calling it, you know, Part 1, Mockingjay Part 1, Mockingjay Part 2, you call it, you know, Hunger Games the Mockingjay, and then Hunger Games... The snow has fallen. You know, because President Snow is the bad guy and his regime is falling. You know, the, the, the snow has fallen. Yeah, uh, son of a bitch. Alright, so let's get into it now. Alright. So no time has passed between part one and part two. And that's actually kind of a cool thing about this series as a whole is there's not a lot of time passage between the movies. The most you get is between Hunger Games and Catching Fire, but Catching Fire bleeds right into Mockingjay Part 1, bleeds into Part 2. And so just, it's kind of cool if you like cut out the credits, this would be one continuous movie. And that's kind of interesting, and I like that. Well done. So the overall story of this is, it's the end of the revolution. I don't think that's much of a spoiler because this is obviously the end of the series. I won't tell you how it ends or who wins, but it is the end of the revolution. So, you know, Hunger Games is just a Hunger Game. Part, you know, uh, Catching Fire is the beginning of the revolution. Mockingjay Part 1 is Escalation, and this is the end of the revolution. And that's basically the story is how the revolution ends. It takes a lot, you know, it's all wartime. There's a lot less propaganda going on that you saw in Part 1. You know, Part 1's all about propaganda. This one's more just the end. And so it's a lot more wartime. And it's kind of interesting that it, it takes a very small scope of this big story. Like, they could have made it this big war epic with all these battles and everything, but they just focus on Katniss and her platoon. And that's kind of cool that you got, like, everything going on, but we're just going to focus here. Um, and she obviously is very important to the story. Um, but, yeah, it's this big war epic with, you know but just these small people going through it. And that was, uh, it works sometimes and work doesn't, because um, you're like, well, I know there's bigger battles going on while we're just sitting here watching you guys fart around. Like, can we see some of these? So at times it works and sometimes it doesn't. <clears throat> um, for, I won't really go into much characterization in this because they're the same, for good or for bad. If you liked what J-Law was doing in Hunger Games, you're gonna like what she's doing here. It's the same character. Same with, you know, the number two Hemsworth. He does the same thing. It's all the same characterization. It, it works and it doesn't work. I mean, there's some things where they do move on, but I, they really seem like they're all the same characters, which is fine. It is the same series. And like I said, they're all continuing arcs, so you're not going to change that much within, you know, no time between movies. But one thing a lot of people tend to forget, and I don't hear a lot about it, and so I'm going to spotlight it. Donald Sutherland is awesome in these movies. I don't know why it's not brought up more. Like, everything's focused on J-Law or, you know, the love triangle. But Donald Sutherland just, like, is the backbone of these movies, and he is so awesome. Well done, Donald. You know what? You get some props. You did well in this movie. And all the movies. You're awesome in Hungry. Speaking of characterization, of course we got Joanna, which if you haven't already said, because I love her so much, yes, she's not in this very much. But every time she is in it, she just owns the scene. And I like what I got. Would I have liked more? Sure. But I think if they would have shoehorned her in, it would have felt just like that. Like she was just pushed into this. So she wasn't in it much, but I loved what I got. So I'm happy. All right, so it is time for spoilers. So if you don't want any spoilers, click right here, and that'll take you to my wrap-up. But for here on, we're at spoilers. So the overall theme of this movie is no one is innocent in war. You really see it in the beginning with Gale basically saying if they're not against the capital, they're with the capital. And um, obviously at the end where they blow up all the civilians, the rebellion does, 
you're like, oh shit, like, it, they thought it was a good end, you know, the ends justify the means. And it did end the war, but, you know, that's fucked up. And so it really plays into, like, there's no innocence in war, and everyone's shitty in war. And it really felt like that uh, a good way to end it was her killing Coin at the end, being that if you're willing to go that far for your, you know, for your cause, what's, how far are you going to go to keep your cause kind of thing. And so I think it was great that she killed Coin at the end. It, um, was it terribly surprising? It was surprising when she brought up starting the Hunger Games again. But it wasn't surprising that Katniss killed her after she brought that up. So it was it was cool. It wasn't terribly surprising. But it was needed, and it was great. Um, there was a slight shift in coin, I thought, from part one to part two. Part one, she seemed like a solid leader. And then all of a sudden, there's this shift, like, oh, she's got to play politics now. And that seemed to come out of nowhere. I didn't, I felt it didn't fit. Um, it fitted because it needed to be in the story, but actually, you know what? It didn't really need to be in the story. I guess they just really felt they needed to have some sort of twist at the end, and that's it, where it fell shoot horde in. You know, when I think about it, it didn't need to be done, and it sucked. Moving on. The end of my hated love triangle of this series, and she chooses Peta uh, because it was strongly hinted that Gale was a lot of killing the innocents at the end. So she chooses Peta, and at least we have a res resolution to the love triangle. It's solid. It fits. Let's get it over with. I'm fucking done with that love triangle. It was stupid and shoehorned into every movie. And it, it's like, can't you just have a you know this story? Do you have to have a love triangle? God damn it. So at least it's done. It's over with. There's no ambiguity. She chose Peter. That's it. You know, the ending was nice that they gave her peace and everything like that. But I think if you're going to end a series, a main character should die. I'm with Harrison Ford saying Han Solo should have died in Return of the Jedi. And I think Harry Potter should have died in Deathly Hallows Part 2. I'm sorry. But if they don't die, you have this wrap up like, oh, I'm going to send my kids to this place that emotionally scarred me. And I had to literally go through battle. Yeah, I'm totally going to send my kids there. Fucking stupid. So yeah, I think Katniss should have died. I think that would have been a great ending. The ending we got was okay, but I think she should have died. I think if you're going to have a big overall planned arcing storyline and you want to end and kill this series, kill a main character. God damn it. So my wrap-up. Um, as a planned ending to a series, this was a good movie. What I mean by that is, you know, not just this is the end of a, this is the last movie in a series being like it's no longer profitable, so that's the last one we're gonna make. Like a plan, like this is the end. Um, and surprisingly, you don't get that many of them. Usually, series just kind of peter out. So, being a planned end of a series, this is one of the best. Uh, my favorite end of a series movie is Return of the Jedi, and that it was planned to end the series. Obviously, it's not going to. And it didn't, so I'm probably going to have to change that opinion at the end of this year. But as of now, it's my favorite end of a series. But Hunger Games was very solid with doing that. It tied up all loose ends. There's no way they can really continue this. I guess they could stretch it and they could, but they're not going to. This is the end. And it was good for that. If I were to rate it with the other Hunger Games movies, I'd say this is my second favorite Hunger Games movie. Um, I still like Catching Fire a lot. But this was very solid, very good, and you felt like everyone's story ended. And you felt relieved that it did, and you're good. So yeah, it was a good series, a good ending to a good series. Hunger Games overall is a very solid franchise, and well done, well acted. And, you know, it's good. If you haven't checked it out for whatever reason, go check out Hunger Games. It definitely is not what you think it is from a lot of the publicity about it. So check out Hunger Games. So until next time, I'm Sexy Matt the Pharaoh Wizard, and I pee in a cup so you don't have to.